What's going on YouTube? You know who it is. Subscriptions talk video a little late this week. I mean, not that late, only about a day. I uh, had a tattoo appointment yesterday. I started working on my Iron Man piece. So, I didn't get to my books till late. I think I only read one book before I went to bed. Finished reading them up today. Um, very light week for me. Only nine books, which was surprising. It's supposed to be ten. I, uh, I hopped on Nightwing late. Too late for my order to get to, you know, get it to me this week, but I should get it next week. I don't know if I'm going to review it, though, because it's my first time getting it. I probably won't know what's going on, but we'll see. Uh, hopping right into this. Superior Spider-Man number 13. Um, Dan Slott is just doing a wonderful job on this book. I, this is one of my favorite books. Every issue it's published, it's, it's up there with my top two or three of the week. And this one's no exception. Um, this kind of wraps up the... the the predicament we've seen um, Superior Spider-Man in the past couple issues where he's on the uh, the raft, I think is what it's called, the prison for the supervillains for the execution of Spider-Slayer and Spider-Slayer gets away and everything. Well, this one, um, you see Spider-Slayer and Superior Spider-Man going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, if you will, you know, fighting each other. Eventually, he, uh, Superior Spider-Man just shoves one of his little tentacles, one of the Spider-Slayer's tentacles through his neck thus saving everybody else there by depowering all of the kind of uh, nanites he had involved with Vulture and Boomerang and Scorpion. Um, and there's actually a part here where um, um, Connors, the, uh, the lizard, saves uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's who it is. For some reason, I just thought I, I said Perry White, but I didn't. Either way, um, saves his life actually, and then at the end of this, um, it see it's we see um, Superior Spider-Man kind of frame him in order to get the rap for himself. He wants it as his superhero base, and he calls it Spider Island Two, which is pretty interesting. And then uh, it actually we see that Spider Slayer wasn't dead; he was dead, but I guess his conscience, his conscience, his consciousness wasn't. And uh, he tries to implant his consciousness inside of Spidey, like we saw one other time. Pretty hilarious. Actually, uh, Auk reveals that he is Auk to Spider Slayer moments before he dies, which is incredible. And then, uh, I guess, at the end of here, um, Auk Spidey says that he's going to make a new co a new costume, which is going to be awesome. I think it's the one with the black eyes and everything. I think I saw it on solicitations for some of the future issues. Um, Uncanny X-Men number 8. Uh, and this cover is not really imperative of what happens in this book. Uh, Magneto and Scott do not fight at all, really. They're more helping each other. One of the uh, the new X-Men that they have brought in, Fabio, wanted to leave after the last issue. He doesn't want to be attacked by demons. He's scared. He doesn't want to do it. So he goes home to his family, and they just do not accept him. They just, you know, not absolutely not at all. They just yell. They say, we're going to take you to the hospital. You're sick. He yells a little bit, and uh, his power just kind of goes off. He has all those gold balls that go everywhere. And then he kind of runs off, and uh, then we have the first entrance of Dazzler, Agent of Shield, and uh, I'm actually pretty excited to see what's going on with her because I enjoy I enjoyed her in Extreme X Men. I know this is, you know, completely 100% different, but um, I don't know if they're going to use that because I'm pretty sure that was um, 616 is Dazzler in Extreme X Men. I think she was the only one of the only ones from um, current continuity. I don't know if they're going to use that or not though, but uh, I guess she's working for Shield now. Should be interesting to see what she does if she's going to be hunting these new X Men. What she's going to do? She uh, she asks Fabio where Scott Summers is. So, I mean, I'm pretty interested in moving forward. Digital code for that if you're available. If you want it, shoot me a message. Indestructible Hulk number ten. Uh, Mark Wade doing another great job on this book. Anything Mark Wade writes seems to be pretty much awesome, and this doesn't let us down either. Uh, Hulk and Daredevil are in Hell's Kitchen. Chasing down this weapon that they were shot with that we find out was being delivered to Baron Zemo. Baron Zemo has this giant weapons cache that they end up, you know, breaking into. Zemo escapes uh, after using some type of sonic weapon on Hulk. And uh, Hulk actually starts going crazy, starts just destroying everything. Daredevil does what he can to kind of keep him under control from destroying and killing innocents. He does, and then there's actually a moment where it looks like Hulk is going to going to destroy Daredevil, but he's actually saving him. There's a wonderful moment in here where he says, even in his most, uh, his most, like, feral and his most wild, he knows who his friends are, which was a pretty awesome moment. 
Um, I think Hulk is traveling through time, next issue, and I think it looks like different art, but then again, this cover's by uh, Rivera, and he didn't do the interior art, but I don't know, the next cover doesn't look like this, or like the interior art of this. I mean, I'm excited. I like time travel, it just has to be done right. Digital code available for that as well, if you want to shoot me a message. Justice League number 22, we have Trinity War Part 1, and... A lot of this, to me, thinking back on it now, it's, it makes more sense, but when I first read it, a lot of it felt forced. I felt like there were just a lot of situations forced, and characters weren't acting like they should. They were all out of character. But my biggest uh, my biggest disappointment about this book, and uh, I've talked to a few, I talked to a friend of mine, we already discussed this between each other, but um, spoiler alert, so if you don't want to know what I'm going to say about this book, jump ahead. Um, when Superman kills Dr. Light, and then, you know, I was blown away, I didn't expect it at all, and I was kind of like, wow, I was taken aback, because it, it, it seemed really out of character, but then, um, at the end, you have a mysterious figure, who I don't know who he is, say, everybody will believe that he killed Dr. Light, like, why couldn't they just let us believe that Superman killed him for the first, for maybe two issues, three issues, but it didn't happen, and then thinking back, I think maybe, uh, whatever Pandora did to him, messed him up, and it, he wasn't all there, and it wasn't his control, Either way, though, I mean, the art in this is, is awesome. I would love to see Martian Manhunter versus Superman all the time. It could be an ongoing, for as, as far as I'm concerned, because that would be incredible. But I uh, love this, and I'm, I'm not getting Justice League Dark as of now. I might pick it up at my local comic shop, but I'm, I didn't subscribe to it. If I hear really good things, I'll probably pick up the issues, but I don't know. It's it, I'm not sure yet. Superman Unchained, number two, and... Uh, wonderful Superman book. I can't, I can't preach this up because everybody is talking about this book. Everybody loves it, and I, I want to kind of dislike it just because they brought in the superpower team. That, excuse me, they couldn't just, excuse me again, they couldn't just put them on like the Superman title. They had to give them their own book, which was kind of bothering me a little bit. But this was phenomenal. The first like eight pages of this is pretty much a 19 second span of Superman has 19 seconds to do something. And, you know, things go awry, things happen, but he still ends up getting the job done. He has to figure out how to stop this building from falling. He can't just grab it. People will die. It'll break in half. Wonderful, wonderful. Very well written, and the art really helped it out. We also see the uh, the, uh, the other character that, we re that they teased in the first issue who claims he's, like, the real Superman or something along those lines. But uh, they're going to they're gonna end up fighting in the next issue. Uh, Batman actually says he ran into this character or saw this character and he's absorbing more um, sun energy than Superman is, meaning he's stronger. Interested to see where this goes, though. I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's a Superman book, and I'm loving it. So, Unless he turns into Batman, it's not going anywhere off my pole. That's the only way that it would go anywhere. <sighs> Young Avengers number 7. Um, when I talked about Young Avengers 6... I was wondering if these characters were going to come back, and here they are. Now, the last issue and this issue come together. We have, uh, what's, uh, the, the genius ex-mutant's name, Prophecy, maybe his name is. Something along those lines. Um, the professor, no, so, something along those, either way. He meets up with them at this, uh, at a breakfast diner, which, you know, they all, they all frequent, it seems. And they end up talking about how they're going to find Speed, who is, you know, taken by this man who looked like Patriot, I believe his name was. Not familiar with him either. They end up going into, um, like, the interdimension, or um, so somewhere in between dimensions, or something along those lines, the negative zone. It's not the negative zone. But they go into this place, and there he is waiting for them. I don't know much about any of these characters still, but I'm really enjoying this book. It's a super fun book. It's, it's, it's refreshing, almost. The way it's written, it's not like everything else I'm reading, and that's, it's, even if I hated all these characters, I could probably still stick with this book because it, it is refreshing to read. Um, I recommend picking this up at two ninety nine. If you don't, if you, if your stack's a little low for the week or f when this comes out, pick this up because it's really worth it. Um, now we're on to a book that I thought I was dropping, and that was two issues ago. Well, actually three issues ago, because I hated much of him, and then recently it's just been great, and I've loved them. This is Avengers Arena number twelve. Um, this one basically just tells the story of Nico the. Um, the witch, the witch girl who needs to make blood sacrifices in order to use her magic. I guess when she got killed in the last issue or two issues ago, 
Um, it was so much blood, she did a healing spell on herself, and then she became supremely powerful and pretty much destroyed everybody who seemed to be the evil cause. But in doing so, she's kind of sent Death Locket down under the ground, and it seems that Death Locket is in Arcade's um, underground sanctuary. But I don't see Arcade being that stupid, uh, you know, to do something like that. Either way, there might be some other uh, some other factors at work here. But either way, I absolutely loved it, and it, it was hard. It's it's still hard for me to justify how many issues I didn't like up until now. But as of now, it's still not going anywhere off my pole. Wolverine number six. This was the most recent Wolverine series, and uh, if you want the code, shoot me a message. But this book was kind of weird. Honestly, I liked it. I hate to say it, but I liked it. The only thing I hated about it is the microverse. Anytime the microverse is involved in anything, I hate it because I hate the microverse. I hate micronauts. I hate all of them. But um, they end up going into the microverse to try to escape the sinking ship. And it seems that this alien spore were there. The thing in the first issue that you thought was a gun was actually one of their ships. They're like super tiny things that invade you and control you. I don't know. At the end of this, they're controlled. They entered into Wolverine, it seems, and they're stopping his healing factor. So obviously, Wolverine's not going to die, but we'll see where it goes from here. It's on the cusp, though. I can see myself cutting that. Um, and then finally, the pick of the week, which every issue, every issue this comes out is pure gold. I, I can't get over how good this book is. And some sometimes I feel like I don't even give it enough credit because it's so good. That it doesn't uh, it doesn't get enough credit in my, you know, pick of the week or whatever. This is Daredevil number twenty eight. Um, it opens up with uh, Daredevil can't stand being in the same room as Foggy because he smells the chemicals in his blood with the uh, chemotherapy he's being treated with. Just just a crazy scene. I, I I mean it's something that you would that you never think about. You know you wouldn't think Daredevil would be able to smell the chemicals or anything, but just awesome. And then it goes to, uh, there's somebody at his law office wanting to talk to him. It ends up being an old bully who used to bully Matt back in school. And he wants him, he wants uh, Matt to represent him for a false arrest case when he was with the uh, the Serpent Squad or the this, this Brother Serpents or something, something along those lines, who uh, actually ended up being like a race group, an anti, like a really racist hate group. And uh, Matt says, no, I can't do that, but I will, you know. I will train you how to be your own lawyer. Um, after after it shows us a bunch of things that happened in his past and all this, um, they go to court. It seems he's doing pretty well. I mean, a little messes up here and there. But then the, the judge just pulls out a gun and just shoots him. Just shoots the guy. And uh, then he he pulls out the then They get close up on the gun, and you see the little serpent uh, logo on the gun, so I guess he's a member. And then uh, it's the last panel says, blam, like he shot again, so maybe he shot Daredevil. Not not really realistic. I don't think it would happen, but with the way this book's going, I would believe it, and then they would find a magical way to come back from it. Just an incredible book all around. That's my pick of the week. Um, I should get a red box run through up this week sometime, most likely. Well, I will get one up this week. Um, expect a what's in the box. Another episode maybe towards the end of the week, if not early next week, because uh, I, I really hammered through some back issues this week. Got, got a bunch of them. Um, a contest still going. Enter it, please. Um, um, and as always, you have a great day.